all elevated uric acid is a symptom of metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance. If you have insulin resistance, your kidneys retain uric acid and you don't excrete as much uric acid from your kidneys as you should. So the vast majority of hyperuricemia or high uric acid levels or gout is due to insufficient excretion because you're over fat. Even if you look thin, if you're internally over fat and you have insulin resistance, you're not going to get rid of uric acid as well as you should. <clears throat> Most of the dietary advice for gout is wrong. A few things are correct. Alcohol is uniquely bad. Fructose is uniquely bad. These have to be metabolized into uric acid and you'll produce more. There's a little bit of truth to the purine story. So purines are a high purine food has a lot of DNA uh, in it. Or, um, so if you're eating like, like beer, for example, beer is made with yeast. Anything made with yeast has billions of yeast organisms in it. And you're getting so much yeast DNA that's broken down into a, it's basically a high purine food that can slightly increase your uric acid production. So anytime you're eating a food with a very high cellularity, you're going to possibly increase your purine consumption. So anything with yeast in it is definitely bad. That's why beer is probably the worst thing ever. It's alcohol and this high cellularity purine food at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, what, where you really won't worsen your gout at all is an acellular protein, like your whey protein, for example. You could eat all of that you wanted and it would never make anyone's gout worse. It would Basically, you're probably going to have higher satiety per calorie and then you're going to be thinner and then your, ins your uh, insulin levels go down and then your uric acid levels go down. And so... Protein is not the problem, especially acellular protein. So, uh, you know, meat is not a problem. You know, we have studies on people going on the Atkins diet and everyone's uric acid level goes down because they're losing weight, because they have higher satiety per calorie because they're eating more protein. And so they don't have to eat as much. And so it's really not meat. Uh, my typical advice to someone with gout is to avoid beer like the plague and definitely avoid sugars and alcohol. Those are probably bad. Mm -hmm. And occasionally, if you have a very small animal with a really high cellularity like shrimp or shellfish, if you eat a ton of those, it could theoretically make your gout worse. Mm -hmm. But it's not really the protein at all that's causing that. I, I, I have no clue how all these weird myths have spread and uh, our generation has spent half of our lives uh, learning this, then unlearning and relearning. It's been quite, quite some process. The, m the most damaging one of all, I think, is that if you have anything wrong with your kidneys, now you can't eat protein. Yeah, absolutely. And that's basically garbage. So the, the vast majority of people with kidney damage have either type 2 diabetes or high blood pressure. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there is no evidence at all that protein restriction is beneficial in people who have kidney failure or kidney dysfunction from type 2 diabetes or high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you're eating a higher protein percentage of your diet, you're basically going to be thinner and improving your high blood pressure or type 2 diabetes. So it's a double tragedy that these people are suddenly told to eat even less protein. Absolutely. It's like, oh, you're a type 2 diabetic probably because you had a low protein diet and you were overeating non-protein energy. And now that your kidneys aren't working as well due to it, we're going to tell you to watch out for protein even more. This is just such a downward spiral. It's really, it's really a nightmare. And so that's one of the biggest problems with the protein and kidney myth.